this fall time of year and we have been working very hard to build inventory for y'all to come out and see this fall. This is one of the best inventory years I've had. We, and I want you to come out and see all this pottery that we've been working on. I've got a big crew of people. We have been working day and night getting this put together. And it's the best time of the year. It's crisp, the air is crisp, and it's pretty, and all the color in the trees. So come out and see us. We're open every day but Sunday. And nine until six o'clock through the fall. So come give us a look. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm gonna, we'll have popcorn, we'll have apples, we'll have music. We'll try our best to show you a good time. Come give us a seat. Thanks. Visit Alawine Pottery on Glades Road in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community. Turn at traffic light number three in downtown Gatlinburg onto Highway 321. Then turn at light 3A onto Glades Road. We're just three miles on your left. We're open every day but Sundays. Now this is a piece of clay. Clay is basically rock, coarse rock, it's silica. When you're making a pot, you're sliding the, the silicate particles apart. And then when you put it in the kill, you're melting it to make it hard. If you've got a piece of pottery hot enough, you got it up around 5,000 degrees, it turned into a puddle of glass. Believe it or not, that's the hardest thing to learn about making a pot, is getting it centered. First time I made a pot, it was a little ball, it was a little old bowl about that big. I have no idea where it is. People ask me all the time if I still got it, and I, I don't. Too many moves. But, but I would fuss and fume trying to get this to work. My first shop was my dad's garage. And I'd get, I had this old kick wheel that I was working on. And I'd get so mad at that clay, I'd rip it off and throw it at the wall. And at the end of the day, there'd just be clumps of clay peppered across the wall in his, shop, in his garage. But after a while, if you stick with it, it'll come. I have probably thrown a million pots in my life. And we're probably, show I know we're showing up in antique malls because I found a couple of pieces in antique malls over the years. But that's okay. I had a teacher once that said every pot is a version of a cylinder, except for a bowl or a plate. So you start out with a cylinder first. and get it nice and straight. And then you shape it. All right, I'm gonna make a big fat jar.
nearly every pot we make is a has a leaf put on it because that's what our reputation is built on. So I try to make the walls as smooth as I can so we can get a leaf on it. Mop the water out of the base, and then I'll close it in a little bit. I have learned that you can fiddle with a pot forever. Just keep mucking with it, but after a while you just have to say, okay, that's it, I'm done. And there it is. Voila. When you make a pot, it's full of water. So you have to get, set it aside and let it dry to get the water out of the thing before you put it in the kill or it'll blow up when the heat uh, hits it. So we set them on these kinds of racks. Now this is a piece of dry clay. This has been sitting for a few days. Gets that buff look. When they're wet, See how dark that is? That's still got water in it. If you were to put this in the kill, it sounds like popcorn going off in there. Normally when we make a pot, we let it sit for about a week. I guess you could speed it up a little bit, but one of my teachers back years ago said the best shortcut it takes not to take one, so we try not to. We've always got pots in process in this place, so we patiently wait. And we don't have a lot of cracking either. So, see how that's still too wet. See how dark that is right there? You want to get it buff, just like that. And they're cold when they're wet. They're still cold. It means water's escaping it. This is where we do our glazing. Once we put the leaf in it and we, we'll fire it to 1875 degrees, which makes it pour. See how it soaks the water up there? And I, the leaf is gone, obviously, but it leaves the impression. So Teresa will take some black glaze that we have and brush over it to bring the veins out. And then she paints wax on it. Now the wax keeps the glaze off of it. It'll bead off when we glaze the pot. It'll bead off wherever the the uh, wax is. Then when you put this in the kill to do the glaze firing to melt the glaze, the wax will burn away and it just leaves that leaf. Now right over here. Glaze is a combination of minerals, but it's mostly glass. It's got a flux in it to make it melt at a lower temperature, and it's got a hardener to hold it on the pot. That's composition of glaze and then some coloring. So we, we blend it in these buckets, and when you dip it on the pot, it's, the pots are in this bisque absorb, absorbing rate or state and, and it pulls the, the glaze into the pot. So when we fire it, the glaze melts and it fuses it together with the pot. Okay, these are our kills. They're fired with gas. Uh, we fire two of them every day. We'll fire it one day and then cool them down the next. They fire to almost 2,400 degrees.
and it takes about 10 hours to get them up to temperature. But then it'll take a day to cool it down because you have to cool it down slower. And then the boys will come in, unload it, reload it the next day, and fire it the next. If you'll notice the door that they've got wheels on them, and it's they're built on a car like this, and they'll roll them out on the tracks and, un and unload the kill and then reload it, roll them back in. Gas comes in through these lines, and these are the burners. The fire goes into the kill, up around into the chamber, and then there's a flue at the bottom on the back that goes up the chimney. The trick is to keep the atmosphere right for the kind of glazing that we do, and to keep the temperature even from top to bottom. Well, I'm glad you guys can have a few minutes to uh, watch our channel, and I'd like to show you some things that we've got going on. Uh, these are some of our pots. These are uh, characteristic of a lot of the scenes that we put on our pots. I've got some really capable young ladies that are good at carving pots, and we can we carve scenes in them at church, and we'll put leaves. We got leaves all over things that we make. And uh, we use a lot of color, as you can see. But it sets it off. But the leaves are, these are real leaves. We, we'll roll a leaf into the clay when it's wet or s soft. And uh, when, when you fire it, the leaf burns out. And we do some wax resist over the leaf so that you can tell uh, what you're looking at. Um, we've got quite a few pots to show you. This is one of the things this year that we've been, we've been selling a world of these. I'm, it's a bacon cooker. Take the bacon and you drape it over it like this and it, put it in a microwave, throw a paper towel over it and they're extremely popular. I never realized the love affair this country has with bacon until we started making these things. Uh, got a lot of different colors. Here's a picture of one. See? We got mixing bowls over here. We've got the leaf decorations on them. They're all usable. You can put them in the dishwasher, hand wash them. I don't recommend putting an electric uh, beater on them, but they've got, we provide the whisk with them. We've got baking dishes. Everything we make is functional for the purpose that it's made for. And we got the leaves. Leaves are our reputation. Back here we've got uh, dinnerware. We've got our classic white dishes. Very popular now. Full settings, mugs, soup mugs. Um, as you can see, we use a lot of color. It's what we do. Between the color and the leaves, our business is built on. We've got soup mugs, we've got chip and dips, we've got serving platters, we've got sugar and creamers. You name it, we have it. We've got a lot, the utensil jars are very popular. We get them with a drip on them. You see that drip? I love the drips. I like the pots when, I want it to look like you're just walking around in the woods and you kick some leaves over and that pot's laying there on the ground. That's what, I call it controlled, uncontrolled. I don't want the drip to run off the pot, but I love it when it drips like that. We got some that don't, but then we've got some that do. We try to have something for everybody. We've got canister sets, all colors, all sizes. We've got display pieces. Look at this one here. Isn't that a beautiful piece? A 
a lot of leaves. I have freezers full of leaves. We get leaves in the fall, put them in, in bags and freeze them, use them all year. I probably got three freezers full of leaves, nothing but leaves. This is our mug room. We have a lot of mugs. We got a whole porch full of mugs, but this room we call the mug room. Uh, we've got every kind of we, every kind of mug you can imagine, every kind of color, and it's a feel. People will come in here and literally pick up every one of these to get the right feel. Now this is an old traditional pot from the mountains that uh, a potter back probably a hundred years ago, saw an illustration of Rebecca at the well in the old family Bible. And she's, and she's got, the, make, got a picture with this, this high handle tells you that it's a Rebecca picture. But these are our Rebecca's. Got different sizes of them, got small. We've got leaf luminaries. See these leaf luminaries? Kind of pretty. It's all about the color. We've got pots with cabins on them. We've got different sizes of them, all these different colors. We've got tall mugs. One of the things that it, our reputation has is this little knob of clay right here to hold it, give it strength, make it comfortable to hold. You wouldn't believe the number of people that come in talking about that little knob, looking for the mug with the little knob on it. It's all about comfort. These are our oil lamps. I've been making these things for 40 years. It's, I can make them almost with my eyes closed. I've made so many thousands upon thousands of them. Very popular pot. They're always popular when we've had a hurricane. We've got electric lamps over here. A lot of different colors. <laughs> Three-way switches in them. In our shop, if I make the pot, it's got my name on it. If my crew makes it, it's got the Ala Wine Pottery and it's got their initial on it. I make a lot of individual pieces now. And so this wall here are pieces that I have made. It's a nice pot here. Something about making a pot. You just always got one more you gotta make. We are very uh, active with St. Jude. I have a granddaughter that has, uh, is a cancer survivor from St. Jude. And so we make mugs that we give uh, a portion of the money back to St. Jude. And this has got the, ins the uh, insignia that we've come up with. And we've got mugs that my granddaughters are involved with. These are our Georgia mugs, the mugs that she, she draws the picture for and we make a stamp out of it and we call it our Georgia mug. This is the, the glaze combination that built my business. I have a picture in, of the mountains and it's got red in a in a fall a fall red in a tree and then it's got the purple and the haze in the background and I've always called this the mountain color glaze and everything came from starting with this we've been in this town for 35 years now and 
I, my pots have changed a lot over the years. People come in with a, a picture of a piece they got at their home that they bought 25 years ago, and I think, wow, I'll try that again. I've forgotten all about that. It's just the nature of what we do. But, you know, I got people coming in here all the time that's got 40 and 50 pots at their home. And that's the most rewarding part of business is how much people appreciate what we do and enjoy what we make. And I hope you can come by and see it. This fall time of year, and we have been working very hard to build inventory for y'all to come out and see this fall. This is one of the best inventory years I've had, we, and I want you to come out and see all this pottery that we've been working on. I've got a big crew of people. We have been working day and night getting this put together. And it's the best time of the year. It's crisp, the air is crisp, and it's pretty, and all the color in the trees. So come out and see us. We're open every day but Sunday, and nine until six o'clock through the fall. So come give us a look. I think you'll enjoy it. We'll have popcorn, we'll have apples, we'll have music. We'll try our best to show you a good time. Come to give us a seat. Thanks. Visit Alawine Pottery on Glades Road in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community. Turn at traffic light number three in downtown Gatlinburg onto Highway 321. Then turn at light 3A onto Glades Road. We're just three miles on your left. We're open every day but Sundays. Hi folks. I'm Robert Alawine. I've got a little pottery operation here. We've uh, been in business here since 1983. I started making pots when I was 19 years old, as soon as I got out of high school. And I've been making pots ever since. And uh, I started, I graduated from high school in 1972 and started making pots in 73. I spent a long time learning and studying with different potters. And then Connie and I moved here in 1983 with two little girls and a dream of building a pottery business. And we've worked and we've done some good things and we've made some mess ups, but all in all, I think we've done pretty well. Uh, we have a, a good crew of people working with us now. And I would like for you to come by and see us. We're open every day but Sunday. We close on Sundays. And, and we would uh, like for you to come out. We are open, we open at nine o'clock and we're for sure closed at six, but in, in the fall of the year and the winter, we close about five o'clock. So come by and see our pots. We use a lot of color. We use a lot of leaves, which our reputation is built on, um, the leaves that we find in the area. And, uh, we make functional wear, we make dinner wear, we make pitchers and bowls and, and a lot of coffee cups. One of the things I love the most about my business is I'm an old coffee hound and people, we sell thousands upon thousands of mugs every year. And it's a nice feeling to know that people are waking up in the mornings drinking out of our mugs and enjoying it. So I'd like for you to come by and see us. We generally have popcorn and music certain parts of the year and potters that you can talk to. You can talk to anybody on my staff that, and they'll be willing to talk to you and tell you anything about our business. So come by and see us. that thing in center. Okay, here we go with another shape. This one's gonna be a bowl. I guess I enjoy making bowls more than anything. There's just something about when you get that shape, that roundness just right, 
Very pleasing. Open it up. bowl is the most versatile shape I make because there's so many things you can do with it. You can make it a centerpiece also. All right, now this is a shaping tool. I love that line. Star she blows. Throw money, please. Throw money. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.